The next episode of Painting and Travel finds Roger and Sarah in Largo, Florida, where they spend the day in historic Heritage Village Park. Sarah goes inside the old stores, and Roger paints the interior of a pioneer cabin. Today we're in Heritage Village. It's in Largo in Pinellas County, uh, right near the Tampa Bay area on the west coast of Florida. And uh, this beautiful village, they've brought in houses and farms and barns and churches from all over the area that were uh, built here during the early settlement days. And uh, I've decided to uh, paint the interior of the Moore House here, which was built in 1879. And it's got some beautiful colors. It's going to be a bit of a challenge because there's so much white in here, but we're going to give it a try. And when I get set up here, Sarah's going to take you on a little tour of the village. Heritage Park is a living museum with over 25 historic structures, including this large wooden barn built in 1911. Right outside the window from where Roger is painting, volunteers tend the Heritage Garden. Throughout the year, special events are held at the park, like this antique automobile show, with over a hundred cars on display. Many of the participants dress in period costumes, and admission is always free. From antique car shows and motorcycles to this wonderful 1945 teardrop camper, one gets a sense of how times have changed. It's a lesson that bigger and more powerful may not always be the answer to having a good time. This Victorian style house in the park has beautiful furnishings of the period to give it its original Victorian appearance. The garage, when gasoline was only 13 cents a gallon, is a favorite place for visitors and looks much as it did in 1915 before being moved here from St. Petersburg. In the general store, visitors can see what it was like to shop just as our grandparents did so many years ago. Blacksmiths worked with these simple tools in another area of the park, and for those wanting to learn this almost lost art, classes are held throughout the year. During the day, other demonstrations were being shared, including the old methods of weaving palm leaves into baskets, and the more intricate art of making household items from pine needles. Even a Florida tropical shower doesn't dampen anyone's spirits here at Heritage Park as the music plays on. Well, I've gotten set up here. I've got my little half easel. It's good because this is such a small room. I have a piece of masonite. It's 11 by 14 inches. That's a standard size, so if I were to choose to buy a ready-made frame, there are lots available. I have my paints out. I have white, ultramarine blue, Naphthol Crimson, Indian Yellow, 
and black. For brushes, I have a variety of brushes, not too many here. I have a few flat brushes, fan brush, and a small pointed brush for some details. Let me tell you a little bit about how I got this drawing on the board. Uh, I could sit here and draw this, and I'm capable of doing that, but it would take quite some time, and I'm not sure I would get it exactly the way I wanted to. So a few days ago, I took some photographs of this room, and we went back to the studio, and I projected this image on the board, and I traced it. I had to do a little bit of work in Photoshop to the uh, photograph because the lines on the wall were a little bit crooked, so I straightened those up in uh, program Photoshop, and then I projected this. If I tell people that I have projected this image on this board, the first comment I always get, well, isn't that cheating? Well, no, it's not really. I mean, I think a lot of old masters, had they had all these wonderful tools to work with, would have certainly worked with them, just like we're working with them today. And most artists do not like to tell you that they've projected an image, but I would guess 99% of them do. I'm sure most of you are familiar with digital projectors, but just in case you're not, I'll show you what they are. It's basically a projector, not unlike a slide projector, except that it fits on and connects up to your laptop computer or your desktop computer with a plug that just goes to an external monitor. There is a little bit of setup that has to be made on the computer, and that is that the computer has to be enabled to use dual monitors, but all the computers are capable of that, and it's not too difficult to figure out. Well, I've turned on this digital projector. You can probably hear the fan a little bit. Uh, I've created a wedge here. It's just out of styrofoam. could be out of wood or anything, but I often use this to put the projector in the right position for myself. This is a painting I did quite some time ago, and I thought I'd like to add a little portrait of my dog, Silver, in there. So with my digital projector, I've got the image projected on here, but as you can see, this is a dark painting, and the image doesn't show up very well. So the problem is, how do I trace an image on there when I, when I can't really see the image of the dog itself? So here's what I do, and this is just another little tip. It didn't really apply to the painting that I'm doing down there at Heritage Park because I had a white surface to trace on. So as you can see, if I had a white canvas, it would be easy to trace this image. But as it is, I can't see it. So I take a small piece of paper, I just hold it up here on the edge, and this is a uh, just a white pastel pencil, and I can trace along the edge here, just holding the piece of paper right next to where I'm drawing. This way I can see the image of the dog clearly on the white paper, and I just follow right behind it on the painting with my pastel pencil. Now, as you can see, I have the image of silver on there. I have the tracing. Now, if I block out the projector, it's just enough to give me an accurate outline of the image. The other nice feature about being able to trace like this, I can place the image exactly where I want it and not have to guess. I can move the image around before I start to trace. Probably 95% of the time, I don't use a projector, but on something like this, it makes it so much quicker, so much easier, and I get it accurate. People are concerned when they look at a painting about how good the painting is or how bad the painting is. They don't look at it and say, and analyze it to figure out the procedures that it was done with. So I don't think it's cheating. This is just a tool that I use. Now, there's no substitute for drawing, and I often carry a sketchbook with me. And whenever I'm in a uh, waiting room or uh, have a few minutes, I always open my sketchbook and I do a few sketches. This keeps my hand in it, so in a way there's no substitute for drawing, but there are some shortcuts to it, but you have to know drawing and perspective to begin with. Well, let me get started here with this painting. I think the first thing I need to determine here is what color this room is, and it's very, very difficult to determine what color a white room is, but here's the thing I always ask myself, is it warm or is it cool? So I'm looking at this and I can feel a very warm glow in this room. So I'm not going to pick up my blue paints. I'm just going to pick up my yellows and my reds and some white. And I'm going to put a thin wash of uh, 
color on here, almost a glaze. Now the white is opaque, but I'm going to put it on thin enough where I'll be able to see these uh, pencil lines through the board. It's a little too pink. I'll put a touch of blue in there. I put black out on, but I may not use it. Uh, it's there if I need it, just to make things a little bit grayer. But I often put that black out and then never even touch it. Just using three primary colors here. And hopefully I'll be able to get all the colors I need just from those three primary colors. Yeah, this gives me a nice warm base to start with. Now the sun's going to keep popping in and out of this window here. I'm going to have to deal with that. And earlier there was a beautiful patch of light across this quilt. And I think that will really be giving me a spark of interest when I finish this painting. But that'll probably be about the last thing I put on here. Now this paint is still a little bit wet, this warm color here. So this white is blending with this paint, leaving a warm glow outside too. I'd like to try and mix up a sort of a green color for those draperies. Now the darkest area that I see in this room are these bed posts. So I'll try and mix up a little warm color for those. They're sort of a burnt umber looking color. I'm going to lose a lot of this drawing in here as I put this paint on. But I'll just clarify those areas later on when I continue putting more detail in this picture. Boy, it's interesting just to imagine people living here. It's a tiny little place. How things have changed. A real piece of history. This quilt is quite light. It seems to be a lot cooler than the uh, boards in the room. I'm not quite sure exactly why that is, but it uh, certainly appears that way. I think this will end up being a very subtle sort of painting. Uh, it's really hard to always to know where a painting is going to go when it's first started. Sometimes I have a, a very good idea, but usually just circumstances take you to places that you don't expect and paintings turn out very much different than you have first conceived them to. This has had a chance to dry a little bit, so that's dry. Now I can put in these very dark colors. I won't use black. Dark colors using those three primary colors. A little more blue. And I'm just going to block everything in here. I'm not going to worry about the detail. Light's hitting the sill, window sill here, but down here this is in shadow. So let's start to play with the values here of this painting. We have a beautiful hooked rug down here on the floor too. So I'm going to indicate uh, some colors down there. It's an opportunity for us to put a little bit more color in this painting. But I don't want it too far. I don't want it too vivid or too bright. Because uh, this being way down here, I certainly don't want to bring too much interest with my eyes down in this area. I want to keep it up in this area. And I can change the colors there if I want. Just to, I just needed to have a sort of a dark value down here. So I think right now I'll just keep this quite gray and then later put some uh, more colors in there. We have so much warm color up in here now. I'm just going to cool parts of this down, maybe where some sunlight isn't hitting it quite so with so much uh, force. Take a little bit of cool color at this point and uh, mix it with some of these warm colors that are coming from this room. I kind of need a combination of warmth and coolness in this room. Like I said earlier, it's very difficult to tell what color this is, but 
in a way it doesn't matter so much as long as the painting itself has some harmony to it. And that's what I'm trying, going to try and achieve here, some harmony to this painting. That's why I put this warm color over the whole thing to begin with. Helps me maintain that throughout the painting. The really fun part to this painting will be working on these details a little bit later, but the most important thing right now is to get these basic shapes down, the basic ideas of this painting. I wish the light hadn't changed quite so much because it was what really attracted me early on was how the light was coming in here. Now that's all gone. We have some old bed clothes and pajamas hanging up here. Just to indicate those a little bit. It's all very, very subtle in here. I don't think I'll put in too much of the detail here on this um, quilt yet. I'm going to wait till I get back into the studio where I can uh, concentrate on that a little bit uh, more easily. As I look at this wall here, it's so very difficult to see what colors are in this white wall. It's always the problem artists have. What, what color is white when it's in shadow? But it does appear to be a little bit cooler up towards the top there. I'm not sure why. Maybe it, maybe some of the light here is reflecting off this wooden floor, making it a little bit warmer down here, and it's a little bit cooler up there. At any rate, I'm going to uh, make this cooler at the top here by mixing up a little bit of blue and just putting it on as a wash here. And even though it is so subtle, uh, I need some variations in this painting just to keep the interest up on it. So I'll cool this down a little bit and this will be a little bit warmer down here. I think I'm going to do the same thing to the bedspread. Uh, and one reason I'm going to gray this bedspread down, cool it down, is because early on when I saw that patch of light in there, it was just so striking that in order for any patch of uh, white to really show up well, this is going to have to be a little bit darker. I'm trying to get this pretty much of a gray color. I'm not even sure why I've put black out. I very seldom dip into that black. Now painting is all about making adjustments. You find something and it looks good, and next thing you know you put another color next to it, and it changes the whole uh, complexion of the painting. I'm never afraid to paint over what I've spent time with, if I can make an improvement on it. Now as I've made that much bluer, there's just so much contrast in here. Either I have to go back again and change this, or I need to change the wall. So I think I'm going to take a little bit more of a wash and put it over this entire wall. Yeah, I really think I need to get this all set back a little bit so this light can glow through this window some more. And like I said earlier, I'm not worrying about any of these details yet. I'm trying to get almost a sort of a silhouette, just a nice pattern going with some good colors. All these nice little dark areas between these boards. All this little detail is going to make the painting interesting, hopefully. And uh, But I'll put those in in the studio where I have a little more control. Let's touch that back in there. I think I'm getting a pretty good relationship now between my values and these colors. I do get a sense of light coming in that window there. And later on back in the studio here, I'll just show you, there was that beautiful patch of light coming over the quilt. You can see what I'm doing there, just adding some patches of of light. So what I'm trying to do now is just establish this whole thing so it has a unified feel, like nothing feels out of place. One color doesn't look like it's jumping out at me or just disappearing too much. This has to look like it's just one warm big area. Then I can put in some highlights later. And we can add spots of light in here too where there never were any. For instance, maybe on these clothes we'll be able to add a little bit of white like that to these uh, pajamas hanging on the wall. I do see where this light is dropping off the edge over here. This is beautiful. The way that starts to get very cool as the quilt falls over the edge. And then we have this beautiful warm 
color down here of the bed frame. We have a picture up on the wall. Maybe it's of Mr. Moore who owned this house. I don't know. But, uh, we'll just suggest that. The light is bouncing around in this room so much, it's not casting hard shadows at all. But I do see that there's a bit of darkness back here behind this chair. So it's in a little bit of a shadow. And there's a nice shadow on this very bottom of this bedpost coming over the rug. As I look at this, I'm comparing the value of this wall with the value of the light coming through this curtain. And I squint my eyes often as I look at these type of things and it helps me to get the right values. So what I need to do is either make this wall a little bit darker or the sunlight coming through this a little bit lighter. I think I'll make this just a little bit lighter up here. Well, this has been a challenge to say the least. The uh, light has changed so much here in the past few hours and uh, it's been pretty cramped and, but I think I got enough values and enough color relationships and harmonies in here so that I can take it back to the studio and finish it. So let's go ahead and do that. Well, here we are back in the studio and I've had a few days to think about this painting and make a few changes. And as is usually the case, there's things I like about this painting and there's things that I don't like about this painting. And I'll tell you what those are. It is very difficult to work out on location uh, in this case. We were in a very cramped area. Uh, there the was not much lighting inside there. There was no electricity, of course. Uh, and the sunlight that was coming in the window at the time moved on and it changed the whole flavor of the room. So you have to work with what you have out there as opposed to a photograph. And I did take reference pictures, luckily. But if you work from a photograph, uh, everything is more or less set in stone. And to work from a good photograph, the composition is there, your layout and so on, and you can focus more on the painting. When you're out in the field, you focus more on the, the feelings and the, the sentiments of it all. Anyway, here are a few things that I've done to bring this painting to a completion. It's really quite interesting and almost funny what attracts people to certain paintings and attracts artists to paint certain paintings. And in this case, this bed was exactly like the one I grew up using. Uh, this one didn't have a mattress. It had a ropes underneath. I had a mattress, of course, but I had the spool bed exactly like this. So this is what really brought me to this painting in this room. It sort of helped me relive sort of my early childhood, and I like that part of it. So that's one reason I like this painting. Uh, I changed a number of things when I got back here. And one, I worked on the color of this room. I made it warmer and I made it cooler. I made some variations in here so the painting is not entirely warm, it's not entirely cool. Uh, the wall is much warmer than the bed. That's the main contrast between those warms and cools. I really made everything quite subtle down in this area. I didn't want to have any detail showing. What I didn't like about this painting is that it had no real center of interest, no real focus. When I first saw this scene and I took a photograph, the light was hitting this bedspread in a very beautiful way. And that was what I hoped would be my focus. And although I do have this white area in here as, as a highlight, it just wasn't powerful enough. It wasn't strong enough to bring my full attention to this area. So the viewer really doesn't know where to go in this painting. And that's what makes this painting not as good as it, it could be. No real center of interest, no real focus. After working with this painting, I realized that the strongest light source was coming through this window. It really couldn't be anywhere else except for this highlight. So this ended up being a focus if there, if there is any in this painting. And at times I had this area in here quite a bit darker and then I made it lighter and darker. I went back and forth on that. It was a real sort of tug of war I had to play with this painting. I also tried to put some details outside the window here, and that just didn't seem to work. It just added a little bit of confusion to the painting. So I left this white and left these details outside very vague. In this painting, there didn't seem to be any real unification or strong grouping of objects. In most paintings, I like to group a number of objects together to, to keep some unity 
in a central focus. Here we have the bed, we have this, uh, these night clothes, and then we have the window. We have too much going on. And there was no real way to, to group these together and unify them. So that's another uh, problem that I had with this painting. I did like the area of the quilt, and I did put some detail in here. And this quilt on this side here is quite a bit warmer, and then it gets quite a bit cooler down here. I kept this very soft down here. I didn't want to have any sharp focus in this area to bring the eye down here. The eye is struggling enough. Well, I brought this painting to a conclusion, but I think my sentiments in many ways about this bed and so on overrode my judgment for a good, strong composition. Heritage Park was a good place to visit, and I always learn something by painting out in the field. So now I think I'll sign this painting, put some varnish on it, which will bring out some of the color, and uh, put a frame on it. Frames often bring a painting to a new level that you didn't expect. So we'll put a frame on this and we'll see what it looks like. For more information about painting and travel with Roger and Sarah Bansimer, visit paintingandtravel.com.